So one of the things that we have to be able to do is we have to be able to convert from that English customary system to the metric system. And so you look at these conversions, inches to centimeters and feet to centimeters and yards to meters, and looking at this and are you responsible for them, yes you are, but that, that gets kind of overwhelming. And so I think the easier way that you want to be able to do this, we're going to go through some examples, the easier way you want to basically accomplish this task is, and I've, I've done this on my own, this isn't in your study guide, but you can circle them if you choose. I took the, the table that was on the previous slide and circled some of those conversions. And what I think is, if you can look at these and memorize these as conversions, you can basically come up with the rest. And what I mean by that, it's kind of like you have a really deep canyon, and you're on one side and you want to be able to get to the other. And that's kind of what we're doing. We're on this English system of measures, and we want to jump over the canyon, very deep mathematical canyon. It's not. It's pretty shallow once you get it. We want to cross, the, cross and get to the other side. Well, you just can't cross anywhere, or you don't want to risk just crossing anywhere. But there are certain places that you trust, or certain places you're like, all right, if I can make it this far, I can cross over. And if I can make it this far, I can cross over. And I can go up the canyon and cross over, and I can go down the canyon and cross over. And the relationship there is, well, if I know that 2.54 centimeters is an inch, well, if I can basically jump over the canyon at that point, well, then can't I run down the other side and then calculate whatever I want on the other side? In other words, I know this stuff for the most part. I know that 12 inches is a foot. I know that 3 feet is a yard. And I know that 5,280 feet is a mile. I know those things. So if I can basically start with centimeters and jump over the canyon to inches, well, then I just simply take into the conversion that I know that 12 inches is a foot. And if I want to go to yards, it will 3 feet or in a yard, and if I want to go to miles, I could have gone from feet to miles. So I can run up and down this side of the canyon, cross over where I'm comfortable, and then run up and down this side of the canyon. So if I know, um, for example, ounces okay, to grams, okay, so I'm measuring mass there, okay, otherwise I'd be going from ounces, fluid ounces, to milliliters okay, or to liters, okay, but I can move up and down that way. And I can do the same thing here with this conversion. So if you want to circle those, you can, and we're, we're going to kind of get into the situation of, well, how do we apply that information when, well, what if? Okay, well, what if I haven't, if I don't have a direct conversion factor, or better said, because you can always find them, I don't know the conversion factor. Well, find out what you know. Okay, I'm measuring volume, okay, or I'm measuring mass, or I'm measuring length, and here's a conversion factor I know. Well, find out what you know and then move to and from either side and just cross that canyon the appropriate point. Okay, but it's up to you. You can either memorize the whole table or pick the ones you know and then be able to convert to, okay, to the ones you don't know that direction. Okay, because okay, you've got a lot to think about. So memorizing less, of, less is more okay, in some situations. And it teaches you to kind of think of what you've got. Okay, so kind of look at what, um, what you need in that regard. Now, kind of going back to our discussion, what if I don't have a direct conversion factor? Okay, one of the things we do, and you're going to do this when you take a physics class, you're going to do this when you, especially when you take a chemistry class, that you're given a certain amount of stuff. And you have to determine, well, how many molecules have I got? Or how many atoms do I have? Or how many grams do I have? Or how, you know, you take a, a physics class and you're trying to determine the amount of work done. You're trying to determine the amount of momentum. You're trying to determine the amount of force. You're trying, you're like, yeah, I don't want to learn that. Okay, but you do. Okay, and we learn that in all sorts of things that we do, as we give, as dental hygienists. Okay, one, one of the worst arguments we sometimes make is, well, when am I going to ever use this stuff? Well, in dental hygiene, we we use math because we want to know I've got a certain amount of lidocaine that I'm using for an injection to anesthetize my patient, and how much lidocaine am I giving them? Obviously, nurses deal with it to a great degree. Well, I'm giving one liter of this IV solution, and within the IV solution, I'm putting this much medication, and I'm allowing that IV to drip at a certain rate, and the drops are this big, so how much drug am I actually giving the patient? Or when I'm giving the patient um, oxygen, 
as a respiratory therapist, and I'm giving so many liters per minute of this oxygen. And if I'm using a nasal cannula, I can use up to a certain number of liters per minute. But when I need to give more than that, now I've got to use a mask to give that given number. When I'm doing, when we get patient reports back, and we're measuring the amount of sodium that patient has in their blood, or the amount of potassium, okay, we're measuring okay, very small units of stuff. Okay, when we measure, a great example, okay, blood glucose, because we deal with a lot of individuals who are diabetic, and so they're constantly measuring their blood glucose level. And if somebody says, well, what's a normal fasting blood glucose level? And you may say, oh, I, I know that, 70 to 110, 80 to 120, somewhere in, in those ranges. Well, 70 to 110 what? Or 80 to 120 what? Is that pounds? Is that tons? Is that kilograms? What is it? And so sometimes I'll throw that out to students in my class and say, all right, when you say patient's blood sugar is 92, 92 what? Okay, there's, there's a certain amount that that represents. Well, it just happens okay, that it's milligrams per deciliter. So it's basically saying that how many milligrams of, of sugar are in the blood plasma, okay, and the volume of the blood plasma would be, would be 100 milliliters. So how many milligrams in 100 milliliters of blood plasma? It's just not that they have 92 total grams in their blood. It's 92 grams per 100 milliliters. So these units are very important that we represent. When we measure protein levels in somebody's blood, we're measuring gra um, grams per deciliter. When we're measuring hormones, we're measuring like nanograms, micrograms, even picograms. Okay? And we, we talk about those prefixes. So one of the things we do is what, what if we don't have a conversion factor? Well, we do something that we refer to as dimensional analysis. And so we take, all right, what was I given? What number was I given? And its units. And I need to, con to convert that to whatever the equivalent is. And I want to know in my other unit whether I'm going from the, the English system over to the metric system, or if I'm going from the metric system over to the English system. I can do that. And what we have to understand is we're just, it's just in what language we are expressing it. Because if I use something like one inch, or if I use 2.54 centimeters, Okay, well, what's the length of an inch? Well, about that big. Well, what's the length of 2.54 centimeters? That big. So it's not that we're changing how much is there. We're just changing the unit of which we're expressing how much is there, whether it's length, whether it's volume, okay, whether it's mass. We're just changing how we're expressing it. So it's just like taking a word and expressing it in one language, okay, hamburger, and I use the term and I convert it to French or I convert it to Russian or I convert it to German or I convert it to whatever. It doesn't matter. It's still a hamburger. I'm just changing how um, the language in which I'm using it. Well, whether I take, again, an inch or 2.54 centimeters, well, those are equal. And so I just have to know, well, where does that, how do I change with the conversion factor whether or not it's 1 or whether it's 2.54. And the process we do this is called dimensional analysis. And so basically what we want to be able to do is as long as we can make the conversion between the units, we're going to get the right answer. Now the number is going to change. And you want to keep track. You want to keep track. And I think it's one of the things that, that students forget to do sometimes, which is, all right, do I expect the number I get at the end of this process? Okay. And even though these calculations are going to be very, very simple, we do allow you to use your calculator on this module exam, so you can take it with you. Um, obviously, they want you to have a non-programmable calculator because you don't want to put all the conversion factors in, but okay, you, they're going to be very simple, but to kind of decrease your anxiety. Okay? But all we want to be able to do is kind of think and say, okay, when I convert this number, do I expect that number to get bigger, or do I expect that number that I get out of my calculator to get smaller, or out of my calculation? So a relationship there is, let's say you have a pie. You have one pie. And let's say you cut it into four pieces. You still have one pie, but you have now have four pieces of this size of that pie. You still have the same amount of pie. That didn't change because you haven't started eating it yet. But you, that number one, one pie, versus four, the number four is bigger in terms of its quantity, but you still have the same amount of pie. 
If I cut each of those in half, now I have eight pieces because I have smaller pieces of the same original size. And so we do the same thing as I go from one inch to 2.54 centimeters. That means the more inches I get, that means because centimeters are smaller, I'm going to be breaking it up into smaller pieces. And so that conversion, that number I get at the end of my conversion is going to become bigger. Because for each one of these I add, 5 inches, 6 inches, 7 inches, 8 inches, for each one of those I add, it's 2.54 more and 2.54 more and 2.54 more centimeters. So that number continues to get bigger as this one gets bigger as well. But it gets bigger faster because for each one of these, I have 2.54 of these. Okay, so we're going to give some examples. So what do we need? We need what's my given. I have a given number of inches. So since we've been using that as our examples, we'll, um, we'll kind of use that to start with. So what's my given? Okay, I'm going to have inches. Okay, and then what do I want it to be? Well, I want it to be centimeters. And then include the conversion factor. Now, basically the way this works, okay, and maybe a relationship that will help is remembering that one of the cool things in math is we can always multiply and divide by one. Think about how simple that is. So if I say that you have a number, um, a fraction 2 over 2, well, what is that equal to? Well, any number divided by itself is 1. If I have 2,323 divided by 2,300, oops, that's kind of off there, 23, any number divided by itself is 1. It doesn't matter. So any number divided by itself is always 1, and I can deal with 1s. I can multiply by 1s. Yeah, that's the number. I can divide by 1s. Oh, yeah, that's the number. So that's the advantage of dealing with how we're going to approach this dimensional analysis because essentially all our conversion factors are equal to 1. You're like, really? Okay. That's what makes it easier because you'll notice that, again, 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Well, aren't those equivalent lengths? Isn't 1 inch? Okay, you take your ruler. One inch is about this big. And then you go to the other side of your ruler, 2.54 centimeters. Okay, that's the same. Okay, I'm just talking about it in a different unit of measure. But the length that I'm, that I'm actually measuring, that's the same. So just like when we had one number divided by itself, well, isn't one inch over 2.54 centimeters just like saying 2.54 centimeters divided by 2.54 centimeters? And isn't that one? So we can say that. So for all of our conversion factors, I'm going to go back to that table, isn't 2.2 okay, pounds, okay, apologize, yeah, 2 point, so I got it right, 2.2 pounds, isn't that a kilogram? So this is this, if I have 2.2 of these and I have one of these, yeah, that's the same thing. So I can use that conversion factor to take what I've been given and convert that okay, with okay, what I want. And so we're going to do that by simply doing some simple multiplication and division by, and that's what we're getting at here, okay, uh, multiply and division given by 1. Okay, so that's one of the things we have to keep in mind. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we're converting from 5 centimeters, and we want to go to inches is what we want to go to. So in this case, we're going to take what we've been given, 5 centimeters, okay? And we want to use our conversion factor. Now the question is, and that becomes um, the big decision you have to make, is when I say my conversion factor from centimeters to inches is 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters, but how do I know which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom? Well, the relationship is that we want to be able to cross out the units we don't want. And so by doing that, we're going to divide them by themselves. And so we've got centimeters up here on top. So to get rid of it, we put centimeters on the bottom. So that's how you know which side to put your conversion factor on. Do I put inches on top or do I put inches on bottom? Well, because I started with centimeters and I want to cancel those out, I can cross out, I can put centimeters on bottom, cross them out here, cross them out here, and now I'm left with the only unit of measure that I can now see in my equation are inches. And so now I just treat it like two fractions. 
I have 5, and then I have this fraction. Now, remember when we multiply fractions, okay, and to multiply and divide within fractions, okay, the relationship you want to think about here is if I have a whole number, like we're showing here, 5. If I have a whole number, well, I can actually make that a fraction because isn't 5 and, oops, 5 over 1 the same thing? Isn't 10 and 10 over 1 the same thing? So whenever you have a, a whole number, something that's not a fraction, you can make it a fraction. It's just 10 over 1. We just don't do that. So in what I was showing you on the slide, I had 5 centimeters, okay? And if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can make that a fraction. And you're going to multiply that by your conversion factor. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. I, need to, I would keep your units on there so you can keep track of them, okay, even though I didn't leave space. And so now, basically, what you're doing is you're multiplying two fractions. Well, that's pretty easy because whenever you multiply fractions, you just multiply top and bottom. Okay, well, notice I get to multiply by one. So it makes it simple. So, first of all, I get rid of centimeters, cancel those out. What am I left with? I'm left with inches. Let me move it over just a little bit. And so, basically, this becomes 5 times 1, hmm, 5. 1 times 2.54, hmm, 2.54. So, I end up with 5 inches divided by 2.54. So, if I do that math, that gives me my number of inches because that's the unit that I'm actually left with. So that's what we're accomplishing by putting these conversion factors to work. Okay, so let's do an example. Now what I would do as we go through this, I would pull out a piece of scratch paper okay, so that you can do some examples and you can make your own examples and you can do conversion. You can do big, long conversions. Once we figure this, kind of figure out a couple simple examples, we'll take someone you know Okay, and take their age, now they'll hate that you do this, but take their age in years. Now we don't want to figure in all the leap year stuff, we don't, we don't want to go there, but take their age in years and convert it to how many seconds they've been alive. Or take their age in years, figure out, okay, for each day you've slept eight hours a day, and so therefore how much of your life have you, in minutes, okay, or hours, I don't care, how, how long have you been um, how long did you sleep? Okay, how much of your life did you spend sleeping now? Of course, some people, they spend a lot of their life sleeping. Okay, but okay, you can get the idea. We can convert to whatever we want. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples of these. All right, so first one, let's do one that relates to something we just did. Let's do, okay, so pull out a piece of scratch paper. Okay, let's do 11 inches and go to centimeters. And I should probably pull it down so you can see it. Okay, so 11 inches and go to centimeters. Okay, so the way you write this out, you write out what you've been given. Well, what have I been given? Well, I've been given 11 inches. So if we write this out, we put, okay, I've got 11 inches. Okay, now if it makes you feel more comfortable, because we're going to be doing multiplying fractions, go ahead and put the one underneath. Okay, if you know that that's there, you don't worry about it. Okay, don't, wor don't worry about it. So then I'm going to multiply that by my conversion factor. My conversion factor is one that I know from inches to centimeters. So now, well, which one goes on bottom, which one goes on top? Well, I want to get rid of inches and go to centimeters. So I need inches on the bottom so that I can okay, eliminate those. So therefore, I need centimeters on the top. Okay, so once I establish where those units go, now what you want to do is in your brain, now not out loud because you'll get kicked out of the testing center and you don't want to speak out loud in the testing center, but okay, you want to out loud give your conversion factor and put it into your equation that you're going to solve in the correct order. Understanding that 2.54 centimeters is one inch. Because what if I flip that? What if I put 2.54 down here and one up here? Well, that would mean that 2.54 inches is one centimeter. Well, that's not true. It's 2.54 centimeters is one inch. And so now to solve this, well, it becomes the multiplication of two fractions. Because then it's 11 times 2.54 divided by 1 times 1. Pretty sure that's pretty simple. 
So I end up with 11 times 2.54 divided by 1 times 1. Well, that's 1. So really, it's just 11 times 2.54. So you're multiplying everything on the top, and you're dividing everything on the bottom. And so that gives me my, gives me my answer, which is 27 okay, point nine four okay is is the answer you would get. Now we're gonna tweak that number here, okay, at the last part of this unit, but you get the idea. Okay, so another one you can do. Let's say we have we want to know we've got a 32 ounce drink and I want to know how many milliliters that is. Now that's probably one okay that you should memorize. But we don't have to memorize it exactly. Okay, we can get pretty close because these are multiple choice tests, and you guys kind of go through the process of elimination anyway, so you might as well do that here as well. But essentially, our conversion factor is that we have 30 milliliters per fluid ounce. Okay, so our liters, that's our base unit of measure for volume. Okay, so we've got milliliters and ounces. It's 30 milliliters is one ounce. So you can make that conversion. All right, so set it up. Take in what you've been given. I've been given. 32 ounces, and if it makes me feel better, I can stick the 1 over that, okay? And I'm going to multiply that by my conversion factor, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many conversion factors I string together. In one of your physics classes, in one of your chemistry classes, you may get 9 or 10 strung together. It doesn't matter. All you're doing is taking a number, converting it to another measurement system, okay, or representing it differently converting it to something else, converting it to something else, converting it until you finally get what you want. It doesn't have, matter how many steps you take. You don't have to go from point A to point G. Okay? You can go A, B, C, and I'm giving, I'll give you an example of that. You're, you're not going to have to do it for this class, but just give you an idea of what's going on there. All right, so I have 32 ounces. Okay? Now I take my conversion factor and say, okay, what do I know? Um, i got to go from ounces to milliliters. Well, to get rid of ounces, and ounces is up here on the top, so I've got to put ounces down here on the bottom. That means that milliliters is going to go up here on the top. So my conversion factor is, okay, 30 milliliters, okay, is one ounce. It's 29 point whatever, but we're going to go 30. So 30 milliliters is one ounce, so put it in that order. 30 milliliters is one ounce, okay? Make sure you read it to make sure you get the numbers on the correct side. Now again, I have a simple math problem here because now I can say that that is 32 times 30 over 1 times 1. That's pretty simple. So essentially it's 32 times 30. So that's going to give me 960 milliliters okay, is, what is what's in 32 ounces. Okay. All right, so let's do one that represents mass. Okay. So keep your scratch paper out. And let's say I have a patient that weighs 110 pounds, and I want to know how many kilograms okay, that, that person weighs. Okay, well, the, relate, the conversion factor that I know is I know that 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Okay? I know that relationship because that's one of them where I feel comfortable jumping from one side to the other. So I know that relationship. Okay? So write down what you've been given. So I've been given 110 pounds. Keep your units so you keep track of what you've eliminated. Okay, if I feel more comfortable, I can put the one underneath. That's fine. Okay, multiply it by my conversion factor. Because I want to get rid of pounds, I put pounds at the bottom. Okay, and you're going to do this in labs. You're going to get a little bit of practice with this. So don't panic. Okay, or okay, don't not come to lab. You get points for coming to lab. All right, um, so I put pounds at the bottom. I put kilograms at the top. My relationship is that I have 2.2 pounds is 1 kilogram. Make sure it gets put in there in the correct order, which would then give me okay, 110 times 1. That's 110. 1 times 2.2. So that gives me 110 divided by 2.2, okay, which gives me 50 kilograms. Okay, that's what my patient weighs in kilograms. Okay, so if somebody wants to feel better about their body weight, I weigh 50. Okay, well, 50 what? Okay, 50 kilograms instead of instead of 50 pounds. All right. So if if we kind of wanted to do 
And you're like, no, I don't. Okay? If you want to do one that's a little bit longer, just to give you the idea okay, of kind of how far you can string these together, and it doesn't matter, again, as long as you establish a conversion factor, you can string these together. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's go that we have, let me pull my paper down here, that we have five liters of blood. And I want to know, okay, we'll go from liters, and we want to go to, well, how many ounces is that? Well, I don't have a liters to an ounce in my head. Okay, that one I don't know. Okay, but I do know um, ounces because we just did it to milliliters. That I do know. So basically, I can run up and down the metric side of the canyon and then jump over where I'm comfortable. Well, this is where I'm comfortable. And then I can run up and down if I need to okay, or go directly to the one that I know. So if I went from liters to milliliters, well, I know okay, milli is one one thousandth. So therefore, there are one thousand milliliters in one liter. I know that conversion. And then I know that there are 30 milliliters in one ounce. So I can string that together. Okay? So let's do this. So if I know what I've been given, five liters. Feel more comfortable, stick the one underneath. Okay, so all we're going to do is get multiple fractions that we get to multiply together. So I have five liters, and I want to go from liters to milliliters. Well, liters needs to be, to cancel them out, needs to be on the bottom. So I have 1,000 milliliters is one liter. Okay, so I got them on there correct to cancel out liters. Now, I need to go from milliliters to ounces. Well, milliliters is on the top, so I need to put it on the bottom to be able to cancel it out, and I'm going to put ounces on the top. Well, what's my relationship that I know? Well, I know that 30 milliliters is one ounce. So now I just have three fractions that I multiply together. But that's okay, because when I do fractions, I just multiply the tops, I divide by the bottoms. Okay, so I can go... Now, if you really wanted to get technical here, which we don't, when we just get to wipe this clean, okay, we can add, multiply, and divide by all these ones that are in here, but we don't, we don't want to. Okay? But let me state it that way first so you get an idea of what we're doing. So I can go 5 divided by 1 times 1,000 divided by 1 okay, times 1 divided by 1. I can do that, but it's just easier to work my way across, multiplying whenever I'm on the top, dividing whenever I'm on the bottom. So I can go 5 times 1,000 okay, divided by 30. So just take each fraction individually. 5 times 1,000 divided by 30. So I'm going to get 5,000 divided by 30 to give, me, to give me the result I want. Now, remember I, remember I joked okay, about the fact you could take, well, how old is somebody in terms of seconds? So let's say you had, now I actually have, okay, one of the greatest ladies I know, I have a grandmother who's going to turn 100 this year. And so if I really wanted to be rude, I could kind of say, hey, Grandma, guess how many, guess how many seconds old you are? Okay. So we could actually take, we won't go through the numbers, but we'll just kind of go through, well, what would that look like? Well, if someone is 100 years old, and I want to go to how many seconds old they are, well, then I just have to identify what steps I'm going to take. I'm going to go from years to, now I could go months, but I'm pretty sure I know that there's 365 days a year. So I can go from years to days, from days to hours, from hours to minutes, and then from minutes to seconds. And so I just make that jump with okay, one, two, three, conver a fourth conversion. So if we did that, well, I'm given 100 years, and there happens to be 365 days in one year, cancel out the years. Then there happens to be 24 hours in one day, and there happens to be um, 60 minutes in one hour, and then there happens to be 60 seconds in one minute. So 
I cancel out days, I cancel out hours, I cancel out minutes. Oh, look, okay. and this is the important part, is I've canceled out all the units except for the one I want, the seconds. So now I can just multiply this together. 100 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60, and that's going to give me, oh, look, okay, if you're 100 years old, this is how many seconds old you are. Okay. And so that's a relationship um, That's a relationship we can make. So you want to be able to practice this, that we're going to give you certain units, okay, and then your job is to be able to then convert that to the units we ask you for. Okay. Um, again, this is not something that's uncommon that you do in the workplace, and so you want to be prepared, want to be prepared to do that.